Welcome back, everybody. This is the post-conference talk on Tauri. Uh, for those of you who missed the Lightning talk, um, Tauri is a framework that lets you build cross-platform apps using your favorite front-end framework. My name is Jonas Kuckenberg. I'm part of the Tauri team. And you can find me on Twitter or on the Tauri Discord server. But we will get to that. Let's first talk about what you can expect from the next 20 minutes. Um, first, we will be covering the architecture of Tauri, the library itself, and how your app fits together. Then I will show you a quick example of how you can get started from scratch with Vite and Tauri. Lastly, we will be talking a bit about like what you do when you're happy with your app and you want to deliver it to people, how you deploy it, how you set up updating. So how does Tauri work? Well, essentially, a Tauri app is just a native window that has a full screen web view. And that web view just renders a website. Um, so you have access to all the standard web APIs that, are, that you're used to from like any regular browser. But notably, Tauri doesn't use an embedded browser. There's no Chromium shipped in Tauri, no Gecko engine or whatever. It is all using the native web views that are present on your operating system that are pre-installed by your operating system in most cases. And on Linux and Mac OS, that is WebKit. And on Windows, that is WebView 2, which is basically Edge. Tauri is written almost entirely in Rust. And we also recommend that you, as the application developer using Tauri, write most of your business logic in Rust, just because Rust is such a perfect match for this sort of thing. It's fast and it's efficient, similar to C, but it doesn't have nearly as many foot guns and security issues as C has. Rust scores very highly in the energy efficiency and performance comparison. It doesn't perform that well in the memory efficiency comparison, but if we now highlight JavaScript and TypeScript for reference, you can see that it's not even close. Rust is, as a compiled language is just that much faster. The number one complaint by, by users has really been that Rust just has a very steep learning curve. And especially if you're new even to JavaScript and to programming in general, learning Rust is not the easiest thing to do. And we are aware of that. And we try to alleviate that problem by providing a very comprehensive JavaScript API that you can use to like write to the file system and do all the stuff that you would do in Rust, just calling that from JavaScript. And of course, it's not perfect. And sort of once you go off the beaten path, you have to go back to Rust. But for the most common use cases, you can generally stay within JavaScript. Which brings me to architecture. So what is going on under the hood in an Atari app? And there are three main components to Atari app. The first one is Tau, which is a Rust crate that handled stuff like creating the windows, taking care of menus of the system trays, notifications, and all that kind of thing. The second component is Rai, and that is a Rust crate that just contains bindings to the operating system web views. So it binds to the Edge web view runtime on Windows, it binds to WK web view on Mac OS, and it binds to WebKit GTK on Linux and exposes that through a Rust interface. Tauri then goes ahead and pulls in those two components. It uses Tau to create the native window, and inside that native window, it uses Rai to render the UI. That UI in this talk, and then the coming example, and in most Tauri apps, is provided by Vite. And Tauri also then, of course, on top of that, provides additional APIs and bundling support to sort of tie the whole package together. And it does that on Mac OS, it does that on Windows, it does that on Linux. And it also will soon do that on iOS and Android. So let's do a quick example, shall we? First, we will set up the front end. And of course, we will use Vite and the Create Vite app to do that. Let's run that, give it a name, select a framework, and there we go. Next, we will initialize our Tauri app. And for that, we will need our Tauri CLI. And the easiest way to install the Tauri CLI is through your favorite JavaScript package manager. Next, we can run Tauri init. This will ask us a few questions. The first couple we can just leave as the default. They are not as important, but this is very important. This is the path that Tauri will include in the final binary. So everything inside of this folder 
will be included in the final binary. This is where you want Vite to put your web assets. And we will just set it to the Vite default output folder. Next, we're prompted for a development server URL. And this is used during development, so you get all the nice benefits of Vite during development, like hot module reloading. Now we should take a look at the generated folder. You will notice it looks very much like a standard Vite project. You have the index.html file, you have your Vite configuration file, the TS config file. Everything looks just like a website, except for this one additional folder, the source tari folder. This folder contains the Rust part of your app. Let's open it up so we can tell you a bit more about a few notable files in here. The first one is the cargo.toml file. And cargo.toml is basically your package.json file, but for Rust. It's where you declare dependencies and a few other things. The second important file is the tari.conf.json file. And that file contains all the configuration about Tauri. This is where you set up updating, where you set up code signing, where you can set the allow list and so on. And lastly, inside the source folder here, there's a main.rs file. And that is the entry point to your app. This is the first thing that will get run when your app gets run. And this will create the window, load your front end and all that. You can edit this file, of course. You don't need to, but if you want to add Rust functionality, this is the place that you get started. Now, before we run our app, let's first configure V to play extra nice with Tori. And the first setting that we will set is we set clear screen to false. And that is just so that V doesn't obscure any Rust errors, right? The second thing is we set strict port to true because Tori is looking for a very specific port. And if V changes to a different port, this whole thing doesn't work. The third thing we will do is we will allow Tauri underscore environment variables because Tauri exposes a few environment variables to Vite that you can use for conditional compilation. For example, if you have a title bar that is only used on Windows, you can use these environment variables to make sure it's only bundled on Windows as well. And lastly, we will set our target to the ones supported by Tauri. We will disable minified builds during development, enable them during production, of course, and enable source maps during development builds. And now we can just run Tauri dev. That will first start our V development server, then compile our app. And if we fast forward, ta-da, your first Tauri app is running. But that is not a very useful app right now. It just displays some text, which is nice, but it would be very cool if we could add some more functionality to it, right? So let's talk about how you do that. And the important concept to know here is IPC or inter-process communication. Because basically the front end, your website, the one that runs your JavaScript, renders the HTML and the CSS lives in a different process or different processes than your REST core. And that is good for sandboxing, but it also means that in order for us to do anything useful, any functionality, we need to talk between those processes. And Tori exposes two main primitives for this. The first one is commands, which are remote function calls. So you can think of them like edge functions or like FFI calls. So you invoke a command that runs the corresponding Rust function and returns the result to your JavaScript. And you can run that Rust function with arguments and of course, you can return data to JavaScript from that REST function. So this is a very useful primitive. But we also have a second one, which is events. And events is quite a bit more versatile. It's fire and forget one-way messages between the front end and the REST side. But importantly, events can be sent both from REST to JavaScript and from JavaScript to REST. So they are very useful for like lightweight, like status updates or progress reports. Let's add a command to our app. And we will first add the command and then call it from JavaScript. A command is essentially just a Rust function. So let's declare a Rust function. And now we annotate it with the Tari command macro that will take care of all the IPC magic. And we add in function implementation. In this case, we will just return a string with the name that the user has given us. And lastly, we just need to let Tori know about our command so that it can route the calls accordingly. 
In order to call a command, we need another package, and that is the Tori API package. This package contains convenience functions to interact with the operating system, but also a few IPC primitives that we will need. Once that is done, let's go into our Svelte component. And first, let's set up a button and a callback, then import the invoke function from the Tori API package. And we can use that invoke function to invoke the command. And we do that by using the string name of the command function. We can give it a name to greet. And let's also make use of the returned string. So let's set up a variable for that. Let's assign it to that variable. And now we can also print it to the screen. Tauri will automatically detect that we made changes to our app and recompile and restart the Rust site and Veet will take care of the JavaScript side, of course. And ta-da, the app opened again. And now if we click the button, boom, our command worked. As you can probably imagine, this is fine for a few commands, but when your app grows and you add more functionality, the number of commands grows and it quickly becomes messy in our experience. So this is where Tori plugins come in. Plugins are essentially collections of commands with associated state, and they can also have eventlessness and stuff like that. But the key takeaway is Tari plugins are units of commands that can be reusable. They don't have to be, but most of them are. And they are also usually paired with a JavaScript module that makes it easier to call those commands from JavaScript. As an example, let's add logging using the log plugin to this app. And as I mentioned previously, Plugins consist of two halves, the Rust and the JavaScript half, and we need to install both separately. So let's first install the Rust half. You do that by adding the dependency to the cargo.toml file. To install the JavaScript dependency, we can use our package manager again. With both dependencies installed, we can initialize our plugin, and here we configure it to output logs to standard out, but also to a log file and it will use the correct file and folder depending on your operating system. Now we just need to let Tari know about our plugin and we do that by using the plugin method and that's it. The plugin will now automatically pick up Rust logs from both your dependencies and your own code and you can use the JavaScript API package to emit logs to this unified log stream from the front end. All right, I think this is pretty good so far. Well, as far as examples go, all right. Um, so once I'm happy with my app, I can just run Tauri build, hit enter. And as you can see, it starts compiling. It first compiles the front end and it then compiles the Rust part. And importantly, now it will inline my web assets into the final binary itself. So there are no files on your disk when you give your app to users. There's just one executable that contains everything. And so this is a much harder to reverse engineer for people just looking at your app, right? Because there are no files you can just open. It's everything contained in your binary. And fast forwarding a bit, boom, ta-da, our app is built. But importantly, it's not built for Windows or Linux because I'm on a Mac machine. And that is because there is no cross compilation in Tari right now. There are sort of early experiments, but in general, it's very difficult because we depend a lot on native libraries, right? We depend on the web view libraries. We depend on the notification libraries. And for example, on a Linux mach machine, there is just no libraries for the macOS web view, right? There's no header files for the macOS library. So we cannot build for macOS, which is bad. But we have a solution for that, and that is our Tauri action. It is a GitHub action that you can just put in your workflow, and it will take care of the hard parts of building. It will build your app, and it can even create a GitHub release to upload your artifacts to. So you can just download them from the GitHub UI. The action also allows you to do a few other cool things. And the first of them is continuous deployment. So similar to what you would do with a regular website, you can just publish a new build of your app every time someone merges a PR into master. You can also do automated code signing, something that is difficult to set up, especially with teams, right? It's very easy if you now just have your signing key in your GitHub secrets and let the action take care of all the hard parts of code signing.
And speaking of continuous deployment, auto-updating is also very elegant in Tauri. We sort of looked around the ecosystem and noticed that setting up updating is oftentimes very difficult if you don't rely on an app store. So we built one right into Tauri and, and you can see this is all the configuration that it takes, right? It takes the endpoint where to sort of query for new artifacts, it takes a public key that it will check the signature on those artifacts against. And that's all you as the developer have to set up. You can, of course, do more. You can disable the dialogue option here and build your own dialogue. Otherwise, you will get the sort of native built-in dialogue. But these few lines, this is all it takes to set up auto-updating with Tauri. And that's it, at least for this talk. Um, of course, there's much more to building a Tauri app than I could show you, even though I think it's quite the nice starting point. But if this sparked your interest and you want to build Tauri apps, then make sure to head over to our website where we're constantly working on improving the documentation. And there's a getting started guide for Veet. But if you have any questions, then you can head over to our Discord server. We have quite the active community and you will get help sometimes within minutes even. Thank you so much for listening and have a great rest of your conference, of your day, and see you on the internet.